Uh, I'm the global chief executive of uh, Norton Rose Fulbright. We're one of the largest legal practices in the world. So you might be uh, wondering why a global law firm like Norton Rose Fulbright would be hosting an event like this. Um, well, beside the fact that we have one of the leading uh, practices in this space, uh, it is our job to advise governments and businesses and help to manage the whole suite of risks and opportunities that arise. Uh, last week's IPCC reports on the science of climate change made it clear that this is a major business risk that simply cannot be ignored. Uh, and it's likely to lead to a myriad of policy and regulatory responses around the world. Now, my dear friends, I've come here today to talk about the ambition needed to tackle climate change. Today, our understanding of the scale of the risks posed by climate change is much better developed, much better supported by seriously tested, globally accepted evidence. We are in a collision course with nature today. We need to take bold decisions to take to change that path. Governments need to start taking action now to put us on a pathway to achieve zero net greenhouse emissions derived from the combustion of fossil fuels in the second half of the century. Ending our reliance on fossil fuels was never going to be easy. Uh, two thirds of electricity generation relies on fossil fuels. Nearly 95% of the energy consumed by the world's transport systems relies on fossil fuels. We are, in a way, today, hooked, addicted to fossil fuels, putting a price on carbon. This is absolutely crucial. All avenues to price carbon in a cost-effective way need to be explored, and all conflicting policy signals need to be eliminated. A critical element of this is financing the transition. How do we move from today to this world of the zero emissions. The question is whether non-fossil energy investments can currently compete in terms of their risk return profile against the known incumbent technologies where we know how to get the money. Building a post-carbon world will offer incredibly exciting economic opportunities. Tackling climate change could become a new source of growth through technological innovation. Changing our consumer habits can also trigger considerable business opportunities. The OECD is dedicated to assisting countries in that process in order to design, to promote, but more importantly, to implement better environmental policies for better lives. Thank you. It's very important to realize that the stakes that we're playing for here. We're not, wonder, we're not worrying about something inconvenient. We're worrying about something which would be catastrophic. Delay is dangerous because of the ratchet effect of greenhouse gases. Flows go into stocks, stocks rise, and it's very difficult to get it out. And as uh, uh, Angel emphasized very strongly, the lock-in of high carbon uh, capital and infrastructure. Let's be clear about the risks that we take, and let's be clear what a sensible attitude to risk would be. In describing what we need to do, um, we should recognize that technological change on this scale, if we look back to the various waves of technological change that have been in the past, usually bring a few decades of uh, innovation, discovery, investment, and growth. Um, I think for us as, as lawyers and business lawyers, this is critical because it's about business risk. Um, you know, the climate science means a change in climate. Our businesses, our business models, um, our whole economy is sensitive to the climate as it is. You change that, you create a big risk. Look, the key message is that governments have to take this issue seriously with the long term in mind. So they need to work away incrementally across the whole range of policies they've got in place. What we see is a lot of action, actually, but it's contradictory in many cases. On the one hand, we're pricing carbon. On the other hand, we're subsidizing it. What's needed is standing back, looking across the full range of policies, and seeing that they all go in the same direction.